today I have my review for Cult of the Lamb, which originally released on August 11th, so we're not quite a month out from the original release, which I do think is going to be important, uh, especially as I kind of touch on a few things in the review. Uh, but this is reviewed on the Xbox Series S, which I also think is important to note, because it, it did come out on all platforms. Uh, the Nintendo Switch, I believe, is receiving a physical release kind of further in the future, uh, but I think that's the only physical versions that you can get of the game, which aren't even available as of recording. If this is the first time you're hearing of Cult of the Lamb, I'm definitely surprised you're checking out this video. But it is a roguelike game, so that means you'll go on these repetitive runs where, you know, it's kind of a, the, the entire loop of the game is that you go on these runs, you collect resources to use for your base to upgrade your character, uh, and then once you die uh, you or beat the level, you bring some or all of your materials back with you, and then you can use it to, you know, do as you see fit. But then the second half of this game is this cult management aspect where you're trying to recruit uh, different members and then you also have to take care of them so that includes feeding you clean up a lot of poop in this game so you definitely want to keep that in mind if, if, if you're kind of on the fence of making a purchase uh, but really that core loop of the game is going on these combat runs uh, to collect resources and then using those resources to upgrade your character in your base and uh, it, it is super addictive this game is super hard to put down once you stop playing or once you start playing it's really hard to put down uh, because that loop is just it's never ending you know there's never like a clear time to stop playing uh, so it's it's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it, but I am going to kind of go more in depth on uh, specific aspects of this game. The first kind of group of things I want to talk about is just the graphics, art style, music, and just general atmosphere the game creates because, uh, you know, I feel like with most games, you're going to look at them and just based off of the art style alone, you're, you're going to know whether you're, you're going to be interested in the game or not. To me, at least, uh, I definitely thought that this game had an interesting art style. Uh, as well as, I mean, it's this weird mix of 2D and 3D. Uh, it's really cool. I really enjoy it. Kind of similar to Hades, but like more cartoonish. It does have that kind of Satan worship theme to it, and that definitely reflects through the art style, but in an interesting way because it's, you know, more cartoonish, a lot cuter than something like Hades. So that's really cool. The music is also just, it's very addictive in the sense that it's there you never really get sick of it it's always you know really enjoyable so all those things really contribute to uh, a great atmosphere in the game too it has a lot of personality and it really shines through and the the game does a really good job of, of pulling you in with with its music and art style Another thing the game does really well is its humor. There's not even necessarily a lot of dialogue in the game, but the, just the actions that you can have to your villagers, whether it's performing different rituals, marrying different cult members, uh, or, you know, just having to go and clean up after all these people. It's, it's absurd. It's hilarious. They do a really good job of, you know, while it is this dark tone, there's a lot of humor and, and uh, lightness to it. Next, I'm going to go a little more in depth with the gameplay. Like I mentioned before, uh, it is roguelike, so before each run, you can kind of use your base to power up your character, so uh, you can perform sermons to build up follower devotion, and then you can use that devotion uh, to upgrade your character. There are, you know, resources you can collect to... Uh, create more devotion for your villagers so there's just so many different pieces of the puzzle that go and interact with each other and the best way to the best way that i found to play the game is to kind of focus on your cult at first and upgrade your character and your stats so that when you go and try and beat these levels and these bosses you're just stronger and more powerful if you spend more time focusing on the cult members uh, and it's really fun i that was pretty much my favorite part of the game I did feel like the actual combat was pretty standard stuff. Uh, I feel like games like Hades do it better. Some of the weapons uh, are just, every time you get them, you're just kind of like, ugh, I don't want to use this one. And there aren't a lot of opportunities to replace that weapon. Uh, you do also get these th things called tarot cards in the game. Sorry, I'm just spewing everything I know off the top of my head. Uh, you can collect tarot cards throughout your runs, which give you 
upgraded abilities for combat while you're battling uh, but you don't bring them back with you and there are power-ups you can get to get more of those at different points like one of the uh, little fleeces that I upgraded it gave me four tarot cards at the start of the run but then if you use that power-up you wouldn't be able to get more tarot cards so the game makes you make a lot of really tough decisions I, th I think that was one thing that I that I really enjoyed about the game was that it wasn't like you were always going to be able to please your cult members uh, you know random things happen like you might have a cult member who dies or you might have a cult member who revolts and uh, there are repercussions for all of those actions and you kind of have to find the best way you you f you think to fix it so it's really interesting you have to make a lot of tough choices and sacrifices like i i need to bring back my favorite cult member from the dead but my my cult followers are going to be upset by that and so you have to make a lot of that stuff it's really fun really interesting uh and i feel like a lot of games kind of take it easy on you and this game does not do that which which can definitely feel overwhelming at first like having to watch over these cult members uh you're kind of on edge that they're gonna die at any point or try and uh overthrow you but you just have to beat them into submission you gotta punish them uh you definitely gotta clean up their shit though uh and it's uh it's really interesting really funny it just does such a good job of having everything interact uh there are however a few negatives with the game and i feel like this has to do with it being uh you know earlier in the release there are just a few issues with the game a few glitches i should say uh that i personally ran into i ran into glitches in a lot of the rituals when i would use them the game would just kind of crash or bug out um that would also happen a lot on runs just randomly throughout the run the game would freeze uh i clipped out of the map at different points too uh, so there were just a lot of general crashes that I experienced, a lot of uh, freezing on, on the rituals, which is, you know, very frustrating because that's such a key element to the game is using these rituals to uh, kind of please your cult members or just to do a lot of important things in the game. That's such a core function so that having it crash when you're doing those is really frustrating. Um, I mean, it, it gets so frustrating if you're on a run and all of a sudden the game freezes right before your boss fight which happened to me several occasions uh so it i feel like those things are going to be addressed over time the game still hasn't been released for a month i i genuinely would probably give it a month before i would feel comfortable making this purchase uh it is 25 dollars or i think i paid 30 for the kind of deluxe version which came with extra character skins probably an unnecessary purchase honestly you could probably go with the base game and enjoy the game just as much if not you know more because you saved a little bit of money i don't think that the dlc purchase was necessary um so it, it there are a few things that are really holding the game back from being perfect i found um and, and they definitely kind of had a negative aspect on the experience but if you kind of see through that it really is an awesome game it's a lot of fun it, it, it keeps you really busy uh what you're seeing now knuckle bones is like a game in the game where, where you play with dice it's actually really fun once you kind of get the hang of it uh you just kind of have to play a few rounds and then all of a sudden you're you're beating all the computers stealing money but uh yeah i think once the bugs are sorted out which i'm i'm positive will probably not be an issue within a few weeks here the the team has already kind of addressed some of them and, and said that they're working on getting updates uh, i don't know the current status or when they plan to do that but as of now september 1st uh, i still am experiencing those glitches um, so maybe hold off a few weeks to purchase or i, I still really enjoyed it uh, i had a lot of fun with this game my final score is an 8.7 i think if the glitches uh it, it's hard not to take those into consideration but uh it, it's it's still a really fun game 8.7 i feel like is, is a good score even kind of ignoring those glitches uh so i i wanted to be fair because i i know this is unfortunately just the way modern gaming works where games are released they're not necessarily necessarily completely refined maybe the development team just didn't know this i'm not a video game developer i'm sure they'll fix it it's not a big deal uh even though i've now talked about it for probably a minute but really fun game i i had a hard time putting this one down it's 
Definitely one of the best games I've played this year. Uh, it's hard to remember, but I believe Legends Arceus came out earlier this year, uh, as well as Kirby and the Forgotten Land, but um, for this to be an indie game, this is definitely, I think, up there. Uh, I forgot LEGO Star Wars came out too. So th there are a lot of really fun games that came out this year. This is definitely top, uh, top of the list for me as far as just general fun. I just got really sucked into this game. Uh, so I, I definitely recommend checking this one out if you have the extra $25 to $30 to throw around. Maybe hold off on buying it, but I definitely think you'll enjoy it regardless. But that is going to do it for this review. I feel like I may or may not have forgotten like a key aspect of the game to talk about. Uh, but in general, super awesome game. Definitely recommend it. But thank you for checking out this video. Also, thank you to everyone who has been subscribing to the channel. We just hit uh, surpassed 300 subscribers. So thank you for everyone who has been following, seeing the channel grow. I feel like the YouTube shorts are part of that. I'd be interested to know what you guys think of those. Those are just kind of videos I make of the games I'm playing. There's honestly very little uh, uh, time put into those, which is hilarious because they do so much better than the videos I actually put love and care into. But that's a little behind the YouTube curtain for everyone who's still listening. Uh, but appreciate you guys appreciate everyone who's still here listening right now listening to me ramble about video games thank you for checking it out peace